start talking. Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Happy Webinar Wednesday. How's everybody doing? Let me just take a couple of minutes to say I really did miss this doing doing this last month. It was it was a lot happening, but I am so happy to say everything's OK. Everything's good. Um, so I'm back, but I really did miss doing this um, last month. So it's been a minute, but I'm ready to get back into it. I hope you all had a great couple of days getting into the week. We are at hump day. Hope you're ready for the rest of the week. And I really hope everybody is doing well. Well, October is, as you know, um, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I know you've been hearing a lot about it. It's everywhere. It's been going on, of course, for years and years and years. Um, but I thought I would add a new twist here at Tyson Storehouse Health Hub, add a new twist to um, how we look at, look at breast cancer and more about breast health. Um, than so much cancer. But we'll talk about it. We'll talk about a little bit of both. Um, this getting into this webinar, it'll be a little, it won't be as long, I don't think, as as my other ones have been. Um, just because I know it's so much information out there um, about breast cancer and you are saturated with the info. So I'm just gonna do my little thing, do a little twist on it, and we're gonna be on our way. All right, so let's get started. Can I see my you want the PowerPoint? Can I see myself? Oh. So, yeah. as y'all know, Ray is here, my nephew. Hey, y'all. He's doing my, um, he's my IT guy slash pain and slash nephew. And, um, yeah, so I'm just trying to see my face so I can see what I look like, make sure I'm not spitting and stuff. You're not spitting. You look like you. <sighs> okay. So, let's get started. So I entitled it, <laughs> I entitled my, this webinar, I don't know, my fiance called me corny because of my titles, you know, a couple of months ago, it was, it was poop, there it is, and I don't care, whatever, I'll be lame. But this title comes from the Wizard of Oz, you know, lions and tigers and bears, oh my, you know. So this one is boobies and titties and nipples. Oh my. <laughs> 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 so that's how I came up with it. Anyway, we're going to talk about breast cancer, breast health. We're going to get into it. Okay. So just a couple of facts. You know, you guys know how I like to get started. You know how I like to do. I like to, to give you a couple of facts just to let you know where we are. So breast cancer is the second most common cancer among women in the United States. So that's pretty big. That's that's pretty big. Um, second most cancer among women. Um, so, of course, definitely um, warrants talk. It definitely warrants knowledge, conversation, because it affects women. It affects a lot of us. How many of us? Okay, next slide. One in eight women in the United States will develop breast cancer in her lifetime. Again, these are facts. That's real. So that's like you and you know, you sitting in a room with your co-workers or, you know, you look around, if you're at a restaurant and you look around and you count eight women, you know, that's that's a very small amount. And so that's how um, impactive breast cancer has been on um, the women, the population of women. OK. So. So let's talk a little bit about statistics. I know we hear a lot of people say you know, one in eight or one in or two out of 50. Like you kind of do wonder, are they just throwing out these numbers? Are these numbers fact? Are they, are they true? So new cases, deaths and survival rates are tracked over time and they use statistical models for analysis to come up with these numbers. They base it on gender, excuse me, mm, gender, age, ethnicity, and other specific criteria. So to answer your question, yes, it is a real number. And they really do do um, extensive research and, you know, analysis, all of this stuff, all of the things to get to these numbers. So let's talk a little bit more about some breast facts quickly. 2021, that's the year that we're in this year, an estimated 330 thousand or over 330 
thousand cases, combined new cases of inv invasive and non-invasive breast cancer will be diagnosed in women in the US. Okay, a lot of women. This year, an estimated 43,600 women will die from breast cancer in the, in the US. So sadly, that happens. It's happening. It happens every year. It's happening this year. It's going to happen next year until we can get a handle on this thing, until we can find a cure. Okay. Black women die from breast cancer at a higher rate than white women. Now, let me put a disclaimer out. This is not to say that I care more about black women than I do white women. Um, I'm a black woman, so I talk about what affects me. Um, and I know a lot of my audience is black. So I like to kind of touch on that where I can. You'll hear me talking a little bit more about men because that is actually my target population for Tyson Storehouse Health Hub. Um, but I talk about everything, but you'll hear me trying to put men in most of my webinars, okay? There are over 3.8 million breast cancer survivors in the United breast cancer survivors in the United States. So that's a great thing. That means people get this. There are people, 3.8 million people that get it and survive it because there are ways that you can survive breast cancer. Okay. That's just a couple of facts to get us started. So what exactly is breast cancer? We hear about it. We hear it talked about every October. You might know family members, friends that have breast cancer or have survived breast cancer. What, what exactly is it? So a cancer, any cancer, develops when the body's normal control mechanism stops working. We have no idea why that happens. It just does. Old cells should die, but they don't. So instead of dying, they grow out of control. And what happens is they form new abnormal cells. So these extra cells, your body don't have anything to do with it, doesn't know what to do. So they form a mass of tissue called a tumor. Cells may then spread throughout your breast, in this case, your breast, to your lymph nodes, which are all along here and under your armpits, or to other parts of your body. Okay, and we'll see how that looks on the next slide. So here we have a picture of a breast and a picture of a tumor. So you see how that tumor kind of accumulates right there in that breast tissue. And then um, it can has it has the ability to um, spread or metastasize to other areas. The lymph nodes here is the picture at the kind of in the middle spreading there. And it shows where it can spread um, common areas that it spreads from breast breast cancer to your brain, your lung, liver, bone. Okay. So that's just a little visual of that. You guys know I love visuals. Um, the next slide, we're going to talk about what's in a breast. So kind of got to know what you're dealing with, what you kind of feeling and touching. It's nice to know what you're feeling and touching um, and not just saying what is, what is going on. Uh, the one before. Um, yeah, so we just talk a little bit quickly about what is in your breast. So you got your chest wall there that's at the back, um, the side view. So it's the pinkish roll there in the back. Got your blood vessels there, mammary ducts. Of course, those are the uh, areas that hold that fill with milk when you become pregnant. Um, there's the nipple and then fat cells. And the rest is just going on on the back. So that's the intercostal muscles, pectoral muscles, and the rib bone. That's what that's showing. But there's not much to a breast, as you can see. That's what I wanted you to kind of kind of see. It's not much to it. Mammary ducts, nipples, and fat cells, and a couple of blood vessels. So that's what's in a breast. So now that's how you'll know when you start touching and feeling your boobies. Because at the end, I'm going to make sure you know to feel your boobies. Feel on yourself. Me too. Touch yourself. Touch yourself. Touch yourself. Touch yourself. Touch yourself. Uh, I don't know winding. Uh -oh. oh wow. I'm sorry, y'all. This is supposed to be P P G. They can't see you, so it's P G. But but still, the uh -huh. bit. Anyway, so that's what I wanted you to see. So you'll know what what you're feeling when you start. Okay. So let's go to the next slide. 
So let's talk a little bit about men. I told you at the, a little bit at the beginning that I, I do like to incorporate men into my webinars as much as I can. You so as much as as much as I can, um, because I do. I, men are my target population. I'm very interested in the health of men, and I'm very interested. What interests me more is men, specifically black men their response to their health that is very interesting to me how they are how how they look at it how they approach it the traditions that come with it just a lot so i like to incorporate a little bit um about men if i try to in each of my webinars so let's talk about men and breast cancer did you know it was a thing did you did you know did you know yeah yeah that men I, can I actually, get breast cancer i actually learned that um uh, there is Fight Club mm -hmm. and then a million little things. There we go. It doesn't matter how you get it, as long as you know, right? Mm -hmm. So it is a thing. It's a very rare thing, but it is a thing. And in my book, just because it's rare doesn't mean it doesn't need to be talked about because rarities happen. But, you know, I'm sure those people who it happens to, those men who it happens to, they would like to, to kind of have themselves kind of you know, talked about in these, um, when we're talking about these things with breast cancer, because it does happen to them, although rare, okay? Although it is rare, men can get breast cancer, about one out of every 100 breast cancers diagnosed in the U.S. is found in a man. I think that's, I mean, I think that's a lot. I mean, it is rare, but one out of every 100, that's not, that's not a huge number, you know, one out of one million, one out of one hundred thousand, like that's a lot. But one out of every one hundred, it's pretty. That kind of narrows it down, kind of a lot. So the most kinds of breast cancer in men are the same kind as in women. Not too much difference there. Sign of breast cancer in men are the same. The signs of signs of breast cancer in men are the same as in women. And we'll talk about that. We're about to get into that now. My bad on that um not having a picture of a man uh breast because i wanted you to see kind of what was going on there as well so i did not do that i apologize hey ronique hi um so that's with that i just want to put that in there touch on that just a little bit so let's talk about um knowing your girls i call my girls my girls i don't know what you guys call them i don't know if your homies, I know. I think we need to come up with a man, a, a, a name for the men to call theirs. Uh, what can y'all say? Your homies, uh, your dudes, just nothing. No, we we we'll, we'll put I'm, that out. Right, I'm just saying it might be something that we can introduce here at Tyson St Storehouse Health Hub. It could be our thing, and then we put it out to the community. No. All your right, bros, then. maybe your bros, your bros. I like your bros. Don't y'all have names for your penis? Yeah, see, it, I just don't understand it anyway. Not only for that, but for, for his homeboys, women. exactly right. So, I don't see know, why the bros can't just be in the set with because the, they they from a different area, they from a different region. You're right, you know, you're right, you're right, you know. you're right. So, <laughs> sorry, y'all. Me and Ray, we go. <laughs> so let's get back into it. Know your girls. So like I said, that's what I call my girls. I know a lot of women that call their girls their girls. I don't know what you call it, but whatever works, know them, whatever it is. So by knowing your girls, you have to know what is normal for you. Know what changes to look and to feel for. But before you do that, you got to look and feel. Touch on them. It's okay. Touching. They're yours. They are yours. It's no problem. They're like any other part of your body. If your arm was hurting, you look at it, you'd be like, what's going on with my arm? If you had something going on with your finger, your eye, you would look at it, right? No difference. That's what I kind of hate about the, stig the, the, the stigma that society has put on parts of, your, of our bodies, like penis for men, breast, vagina for women, you know, it's like a, almost a taboo that if you talk about it, it's like, oh my goodness, you know, why are you talking about that? But this stuff needs to be talked about. It's a part of our body. So know them, know how they feel. 
then you need to report any changes to your doctor immediately. So while you're looking and feeling, touching, anything that feels different, looks different, smells different, you want to talk to your doctor. Don't chalk it up as, you know, oh, I, you know, I've hurt myself. I, you know, I hit my, my chest. Could be from that. You're right. It could be. But it's very rare. Hitting your chest will cause a lump. It could cause a bruise. Um, so just follow up. Always want to follow up. Then I think I'm talking. Is this slide eight? Oh my God, she done lost the place. Man. I did, because I, I want to make sure I talk about everything. Okay, that's that's not that important. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You on slide nine. Slide nine. Okay, so knowing that your breasts, I want you to also know about your girls, is that your breasts change as you go through different stages of your life. I know for me, I'll be 50 next year. Woo. So what a blessing. <laughs> you made me sick. <laughs> what a blessing. So, that was a good fix, though. That <laughs> so I know for me, things are a little bit different. I know for y'all, too, if you may, even though you don't want to admit it, sometimes things shift. They change. They look different. So it's important to learn what is normal for your breasts. Your breasts. Not everybody else's breasts. Yours. This is called breast self-awareness. All right. So the key to breast self-awareness is knowing how your breasts normally look and feel. This helps you to notice any changes. OK, so the last one, start breast screening before the age of 50. Now, this one, um, I'm in in healthcare, So, of course, I try to keep up with the with the recommendations from the uh, American Cancer Society and the UT, the USPSTF. That's a group. Uh, like a task force of doctors and professionals and a lot of people who come together and try to catch things, um, disease process before they happen. They do preventative measures. They think of things that, that they could do. So they have recommended, they changed the recommendations a little bit for screening. So they recommend women who are 50 to 74 years old and are at average risk for breast cancer should get a mammogram every two years. Women who are 40 to 49 should talk to their doctor or health other healthcare professional about when to start and how often to get a mammogram. Women should weigh the benefits and risk of screening tests when deciding whether to begin getting mammograms before 50. We're going to talk about why. Uh, and the American Cancer Society recommends that screening should start at 45 instead of 40. So they changed that a little bit too. So instead of 40 or 50? Uh -uh. So they re they recommend screening at start at 50. Right. But if you get it before, because before it was, if you want to, you can get it or suggest to your doctor that you want to get screened at 40. Oh, so they moved that, they moved that part up to 45. Gotcha. Okay. So the reason these changes, I thought this was pretty interesting um, because I, you know, I had people ask me and I wondered myself, well, what if I want to get screened? What if I just want to make sure I'm okay? You know, yeah, did you check girls out. if I check my girls and my girls are normal, but what if I still in my head want to be like, Hey, I just want to make sure I'm good. So the reason that they changed it and the reason why this is not a thing to do is because it can include false positive test results. So when a doctor sees something that looks like cancer, but is not, that's called a false positive test, which can lead to more tests, which can be expensive, invasive, time consuming, and cause anxiety. So if there's no need, if there's no um, factors pointing to at why you should get a screening or why you need a screening at 40, or 38 or 33 instead of 50, then this is the reason that they they have kind of shunned, shunned that. They don't want to do that at that age. Tests can also come lead to overdiagnosis. That's when doctors find a cancer that would not have gone on to cause symptoms or problems, or it may have gone away on its own. Treatment of these cancers is called overtreatment or overdiagnosis. Overtreatment includes um, surgery or radiation therapy. So that's going in, let's just say 
getting a benign uh, a tumor. It may need surgery, but what if it's just, you know, what if it's not even like that? But if it's something else going on and now you've had a surgery that's invasive, you know, so that leads to other things as well. You can unnecessary and unwanted side effects. Mammograms may also miss some cancers. So you have a mammogram, it might miss something and that's called a false negative test result. And that may delay finding the real cancer and getting treatment for it. So there's a lot of reasons that they came to this conclusion about the age and when is the best time to get screened. So of course, um, side note, you are to talk to your doctor, of course, if you have history, strong history of cancer in your family, um, mom, sister, brother, grandma. Um, I think even aunts are think sometimes are um, considered. Talk to your doctor definitely about that if you have a strong history um, because they may decide, you guys may decide together to go ahead and be screened. But just for normal, regular people, they want breast screening to start at age 50. Unless you're checking out your girls and you feel something. All right, exactly. All right, and we're gonna get into that. So clinical breast exam versus breast awareness. You just heard me talk a little bit about breast awareness. Clinical, I don't know, I'm, I don't know when they stopped doing clinical breast exams, but I know I'm old enough to know that they used to do them. When you go to have a regular physical, the that was in, that was included as as part of your physical that you your doctor would do a breast exam. And you lay back, put your arm up, and she do her thing, and she feel all under the air. That was just <laughs> you make it sick. <laughs> in person, she did her thing. Yeah, she did. You know, she did a you know did her thing, and um. You know, that was part of it. It was no extra charge. It was nothing. It was just part of your complete physical. Now they have changed it. They have changed that. So the American Cancer Society no longer recommends a clinical breast exam. So you won't see doctors doing that anymore. Um, and they haven't been just for a minute. Um, Did they say what? Well, we're about to get into it. Oh. So the reason is they rather you... Feel your boobies. All right. I don't know if it also, if you guys remember that there was, they would, the doctors would tell you to check your breast once a month, I think after your period, um, to kind of remember. And they would tell you how to do it. So you put your hand behind, you lay on your back, you do kind of like a circular motion, start out, and then you go into the nipple, you feel the nipple, you pinch on it, all the things, right? They would tell you that. Okay, so that's kind of, they're not getting away with that part of it, but they are doing away with having the, your physicians do it. And the reason is, um, during the beginning of the mammography area, mam mammography era, that's when mammograms came out. Okay. The combination of clinical breast exams and mammography was associated with a lower risk of dying from breast cancer. And clinical breast exams was shown to offer an independent contribution to breast cancer detection. Now that was prior to them having all the technology that they have now, all the things that they can do now. So that's what their that was their contribution, healthcare's contribution to let us help you help yourself. We're gonna take these breasts for you. That's what that was. But the, since then, as mammography has improved and women's awareness and response to breast symptoms has increased, studies suggest that clinical breast exams contributes very little to early breast cancer detection in settings where mammography screening is available and awareness is high. So they come, this group task force has come and said, you know what, it's not that serious. I don't think the, the doctors have to do that anymore. It's not helping anything, not hurting, but it ain't helping. So we are going to introduce breast awareness. So quick question. I heard you say where it's high, like the mammography was high. The the mammography exams was high. What, what, what? The that they wanted to reduce the clinical breast exams. Mm -hmm. What if the area ain't high? The area? Yeah, the the areas that 
they were doing these clinical exams, they said that it wouldn't help him because read what you said. <laughs> I don't know it. I'm I'm trying to get it. Okay. So I said that why they during the, uh -huh, the combination of clinical breast exams and mammography was associated with a lower risk of dying back then. Back then. Because they didn't have the technologies, they didn't have the research. Keep, keep going. Okay. Since then, mm -hmm. mammography has improved. Okay. And women's awareness and response to breast symptoms has increased. Okay. The, the studies that exist suggest that clinical breast exams contributes very little right. to early breast cancer detection in settings where mammography screening is available and awareness is high. Those settings, not areas, those settings. Oh, okay, okay. Settings, okay, wrong word, not area, but settings. Mm -hmm. What if, if those settings don't hold true? Do we need to... I don't think I well clinical breast exams aren't coming back. Oh, okay, okay. That's okay. not coming back. So what they're trying to do is increase breast awareness. Gotcha. All right. Instead of solely depending on, oh, I don't check my breast. I got a physical in six months. She can do it. Gotcha. Trying to increase the awareness of saying, hey, it is important for me to fill on my own boobies. All right. Well, feel, feel yourself. Was, feel was, feel yourself. Feel what's going on. So that's kind of how they came up with that. Gotcha. Many experts now say that women should focus on breast awareness instead of doing a breast, um, the, the breast exams the way we know. Gotcha. So gotcha. yes, back in the day, you would do your breast exams, you would fill on your boobies, you squeeze your nipples, you do all the things, you fill up under your armpit. We still want you to do those things, but we want you to do it every, you know, when you, when you, every, when you think about it, we don't want you to just say, oh, once a month, we want you once a week, twice a week in the shower. See how how your breast feeling. Touch them. Touch them. Feel yeah. them. Soap up your hand, and so it'll be smooth enough so you can feel any lumps, any 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 of those things that are abnormal. Also, we want you. Well, we'll get into that in a minute. I don't want to get ahead of myself, right. but I just wanted to let you know why clinical breast exams are were done away with. All right. Okay. So how do I check my breast? Right. How you touch yourself? Right. Basically, how you touch yourself. How you touch yourself. You know, I can't, I ain't in the, no judgment. You know, I, hey, whatever works. I'm going to just tell you the outline, the guideline of how to touch your boobies. Okay. That's, okay. That's, does this work for men and women? It works for men and women. All right. I want you to look at your breasts and feel each breast and armpit and up to your collarbone. So as you're feeling, because this is a PG webinar. I'm not gonna go in, gonna go in. but I'm just saying, you know, you know what I'm saying. All right. You so saying? you want to feel? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen, listen. They, they, they can't see you. They oh. see you. Yeah. All right. Now they can see you. Okay. Right. All right. So, like I was saying, I, I can't be there with you. I can't, I can't guide you. Whatever works for you, do for you. We can't, we can't get no X-ray. No, I can't. I can't. I can't. Because. Okay. I can't do it, but I'm going to imply some things. So when you're at home, first thing I need you to do, look in the mirror, look at your breasts, stand in the mirror, arms on your side, and just look at them. Now, sometimes there are, some, there are, it's very common for breasts to be a little bit lopsided. That's okay. It's normal. Just a teeny bit, not one up here and one by your belly button. Oh, I, Lord. That's that. And I ain't talking about. Just a little bit. So you want to look at your breast. Make sure the symmetry is pretty, pretty good. Okay. You don't see any rashes, any um, drainage, any dimpling. You know what? We'll talk about all that later. Um, so you just want to look at them. Make sure they're looking pretty good. Okay. Then you want to start feeling them. So you want to take your hand. You want to go around, make sure you don't feel anything. You want to squeeze your nipple, make sure that nipple isn't draining. Make sure you don't have any how, on your how, own time, how, on your own time. How hard are you squeezing this nipple? On your own time. But how hard are we squeezing? I don't, I can't, I don't have a pressure gauge. You want okay. me to, I don't know. All right. Not till it hurts. Okay. Well, say that. So you want to squeeze your nipple, make sure there's no drainage or anything like that. Don't hurt yourself. Let me just say that because nut over here so make sure you don't do that so you want to go around feeling you're feeling for any abnormal lumps any 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 pain that shouldn't be 
pain in one particular area. Then you want to move up to your collarbone. So you want to go up, up, feel up here, because what you're doing is feeling for any lumps that may be in lymph nodes. So you want to feel up here. Then you want to go up under your armpit, feel around here, all around. And then you want to come back around, around your breast, down and then around, back to your breast. Oh, we already talked about looking your breasts in the ear mirror. You want to look with your arms by your side, on your hip, on your hips, and then raised. Okay. Is there an area um, that is more where cancer is more obvious than others? So, mm -hmm. like the 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 top of the pectoral mm -hmm. or blood? okay, lumps can be found anywhere. anywhere. That's why you got to check them. That's why you got to feel on them because gotcha. they could be anywhere. They could be right up under that nipple. That, uh, that areola, they can be, you know, in here, they can be back here on the side because you got breast tissue, depending on how large your breasts are, you know, go up to the, to the side. So you want to check all the areas. Gotcha. Don't leave nothing out. Okay. Remember, every woman's breasts are different in terms of size, shape, and consistency. Uh, many women have breasts that feel lumpy anyway. Um, they're thick, they're tender. I know a lot of women with bigger, larger breasts Fit, tend to feel a little more lumpier because of the, um, I guess, the denser tissue. So, but you will know if you feel on your breasts and touch on your boobies enough, you'll know what's abnormal. That's why you have to do it. Okay. The, um, when you have a little tenderness and thickness right before your period, that is called fibrocystic breast changes or cyclic breast changes. And that's normal. They come and go with your menstrual cycle. So if you notice women, when you have a period, um, sometimes your breasts get really tender, almost can't even really touch them. That's what is called cyclic changes. So you might feel a little thickening, feel a little sw uh, swelling. That's normal. Breast lumps are common and most often they're non-cancerous, particularly in young women. Still, it's important to have any breast lump e evaluated by a doctor. Please don't let any lump that you feel. I don't care if you, you know, this small or, oh, it's nothing. I don't want to go. I just left the doctor please, please, please take care of it. Okay. Now let's talk about some red flags. So, okay. I'm touching my boobs. Now what, what do I, what am I looking for? What am I, what am I doing? All right. So these are some things that you want to recognize. Okay. You want to recognize a lump, hard, a lump, a hard lump or not that is thickened, thickened inside the breast or the underarm area. So that's not normal. Any hard knot or lump thickening anything in this area under the arm, that is worth concern. Okay. Any swelling, warmth, redness, or darkening of the breast. I got a kind of, well, these are cartoon pictures. So it may look different, of course, for skin color and things like that. But again, touch your boobies, you'll know what you're looking at. Okay. You know what you're looking for. Changing the size or shape of the breast. This is what I was talking about when it's a little bit off, kind of normal, but when it's, you know, noticeably like, oh my God, off, then yes, you might want to, you know, talk to your doctor. Okay, next one. Any dimpling or puckering of the skin. So, you know, your skin should be fairly smooth around, well, should be smooth around your breast. And you should notice anything that's dimpling in or just not looking like the rest of your skin. Be aware of those things. Any itchy, scaly, sore, or rash on the nipple. So if your nipple is dry, it's scaly, um, you notice it's itching, it's scaling up, kind of keep an eye on that. I would talk to your doctor about it. Any pulling in of your nipple or other breast of the or other parts of the breast. So you know your nipples are outward. If for some reason one is kind of Puckered, I mean, I'm uh, pulling in, you know, watch that. Look at that. That's not normal. You want to talk to your doctor. And the last of them, nipple discharge that starts suddenly. You're not pregnant. Um, no, nothing should be coming out your nipples unless that. I can't think of any other reason that they may. Um, nipple discharge that starts suddenly. Definitely. Keep an eye on it. Ask the doctor what's going on. Let him know that this is happening or her know that this is happening. Okay. 
new pain in one spot that does not go away. Breast should be pretty much pain, pain free um, unless during your period, you know, you have some tenderness. But if it's in one spot and you notice that spot is always a little tender, a little painful, and it just kind of won't go away, definitely talk to your doctor about that. OK, so. Let's go on. I understand, Ray, you didn't tell me about any questions, so I guess I'm good. Um, so how do I keep my titties in tip top shape? How do I kind of ensure, you know, let me just put another disclaimer out. I'm not saying that if you keep your boobs healthy that you won't get cancer. Definitely not saying that at all. Cancer kind of just, you know, it could be from hereditary um, sources. It could be, you know, just came. I know there was a, a lady that I knew that had lung cancer and she passed, but she not, did not smoke a day in her life. She was a vegetarian. She ate well. So we don't really know why these things happen with cancer. So I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that what we can do to help keep them as healthy as we can. OK, so the first thing we want to do is we want to maintain a healthy weight. OK, so production of estrogen and women's fat tissue after menopause is a major factor. In obese women, estrogen sensitive breast cancer tissues are exposed to more estrogen than in women of a healthy weight. So all of this extra sensitive estrogen can stimulate the growth and progression of breast cancer. So we want to just make sure and, and you'll notice, guys, as we go through this, most of these things you will see in every area of health, of every area of, of preventative measures of trying to keep a disease process away, prevent something, stop something. You'll notice you will see weight water balanced diet limit apple you will see these things all the time so it kind of lets us know that the better we are with our health and keeping our health in check the more we can stave off all of these things that can happen to or try to stave off things things that can happen to us okay so number two exercising as a preventative measure Women who are physically active are 25% less likely to develop breast cancer than women who are sedentary or just kind of hanging out, laying around. Research shows that regular exercise can help prevent breast cancer by boosting immune function, warding off obesity, and lowering levels of estrogen and insulin. All those are great. Exercise, I mean, I bet if we talked about any other disease process, exercise as a preventative measure would be in it. OK, stay hydrated and eat a healthy and balanced diet. So apples, berries, carrots, broccoli, cabbage, kale, watermelon and whole grains are just a few of the cancer fighting foods that are rich in antioxidants. I know you heard that word before, right? Antioxidants. Yep. So what are they? Antioxidants are substances that inhibit the oxidation process and they act as protective agents in your body. So they protect the body from the damaging effects of free radicals. So what's a free radical? A free radical is a byproduct of the body's normal chemi chemical processes. So um, you think of a lawnmower. I, I, I'm sure I could think of a better analogy, but I'm this all I come to my head. So you know how old school lawnmowers, you mow the lawn, well, probably, I don't know about newer ones, but you're mowing the lawn and the grass looks really good after you get through, but then you got that, the grass that kind of spews out the side. Clippings. Oh, it's called clippings? I never knew. I just... So that's kind of like the byproduct of the grass, right? So you we don't need that part. So it's a byproduct, it threw it off, but the grass looked nice but the byproduct is on the side. So that's what free radicals, um, so they do, they, they the clippings. they're the clippings. Gotcha. Um, they're byproducts of the body's normal chemical processes and antioxidants protect against that. Okay. Free radicals attack healthy cells, which changes their DNA, DNA, allowing tumors to grow. So if we eat enough antioxidants and keep it in our food and eat healthy, um, we can build up these antioxidants and they could become um, 
the substances that attack the free radicals and keep everything in check. Okay. Four, limit alcohol to one drink per day. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. Well, we don't lost. Yeah, we done lost. We done, we might have lost a few of our viewers right now. Yeah. It's okay. I don't judge because. Well, can can I save up my one day for the weekend? Yeah. Oh, your. So you know, I ain't drink Monday through through. Uh, well, you can drink Saturday. But I can make up for the Monday. No, no, no. Friday. Ain't no making up. That day is that day. Let's so, get into it. So, so I can't have six no, on no to make up. No, no. What if it's one big drink? No. Limit alcohol to one drink per day. Women who drink more than one alcoholic beverage per day, even just two drinks, are at an increased risk of developing breast cancer. According to the, excuse me, according to the, Ooh, goodness, sorry, y'all. According to the American Cancer Society, the amount of alcohol consumed is important, not the type of alcohol, but the amount. So make sure you're watching how much you're drinking. You don't want to, especially if you've got that history of cancer in your family. You just want to keep all of those things down um, and just watch it. And it, like I said, it's good for other things too, to not drink so much alcohol. It's good for your liver. Okay. Number five, take your vitamins, especially vitamin D. Women with low levels of vitamin D may run a greater risk of developing breast cancer and breast cancer survivors with low vitamin D levels may have a greater risk of disease recurrence. So you might want to talk to your doctor and just making sure I know I like to kind of just know I'll get a lab done. I'll tell my doctor, you know, would you check my triglycerides, my cholesterol, check my vitamin D, my vitamin B, you know, just to kind of see where you are. Um, the best source of vitamin D is, of course, from the sun. So women who don't get a lot of daily sun exposure can be deficient. So talk to your doctor. Make sure um, you get your lab levels checked for vitamin D. If you are deficient, he may he or she may want to start you on a vitamin D3 supplement. Okay, so that's just little, what you call it, snippet? I don't know, something to, to just, yeah, to just make sure you're keeping up with that as well. So. All I can think of is sunshine. <laughs> so what is the bottom line? What are we saying? Overall, I want you to touch your titties. Whoop. That's oh, that's what I need you to do. Touch them. Feel them. Fill them up. Grab them. Squid, whatever. Feel on, on your girls. Love on them. Give them some love. love them. Then I want you to know what's normal for you. I want you to nurture your health. Keep up with your water intake. Try to get moving every day, at least 30 minutes, doing something. I don't care if it's housework. That's what's like a good place to start to start. Take a walk. It's been really nice outside. Take a walk. Remind your friends, men and women, to do your breast checks. Don't forget when you hang up with the phone. Hey girl. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. All right, then. Oh, hey, don't forget to love on your girls. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do mine. All right, then. Bye, girl. Simple as that. Remind your friends. Involve them because you want to look out for them as well. Okay? Make it a group effort. And then see your doctor for any abnormalities. Anytime you're checking anything, you're not feeling something, you know, you're feeling something that's not right. Make sure you let your doctor know. Then, as always, I want you to read and stay knowledgeable. All right? Don't take everybody's word. Don't take my word. Of course, I'm getting this from reputable sites, American Cancer Society, the USPSTF. I'm getting them from sources, but still you can too. Read, stay knowledgeable, keep up on what's going on with your body. Don't let people tell you how to manage it. You manage it. Take care of yourself. Okay. All right. And I believe that's all I have. Thank you guys. Thank you. For your, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, Next month, I'll be putting up some um, post of what we're going to be talking about next month. I have it. I just can't remember what it is. And it was a lady that um, I won't call her name just in case she's watching um, that wanted me to do something um, that I thought was very, very interesting. And I'm, it's going to take a little bit of a turn, but I am so excited to do it. 
probably won't be till next year. Um, but I'm going to do it because I think it's so, so important what we're going to talk about. I'm just going to keep it in the kind of in the dark for y'all. Keep it. It's a mystery, but it's going to be so good. So good. Um, so I want you guys to have a great rest of your week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Look out for more um, posts and reminders about our webinar on next Wednesday, next month. Next month. Last Wednesday of the month. Is it? That's because of Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. So maybe not. I'll get with y'all. The, the the third week. Third weekend. I think because of the holidays, we'll we'll be doing the third weekend instead of how we always do the last weekend. So but I would looking at potentially the seventeenth. Potentially the seventeenth. But I will keep you guys posted. What we're we gonna be talking about? I can't remember. Men help part two. Probably. You know, I was thinking that. Okay, y'all remember when we did um, <laughs> mental health for black men? The black men mental health. That I'm telling you, I think that was the most watched webinar. It went over so well. So, and I told you guys we were going to do a part two. And I'm thinking, now that I'm thinking, I'm thinking it'll be next month. Let me I, let me just rally up my dudes, the dudes I want to ask. If I can get my nephew here to act right, it'll be him. A couple other men. But I'm telling you, it went over so well. So you guys get ready for that. <sighs> Have a wonderful week, guys. Oh, just real quick, um, we call call them the girls. Somebody said in the comments, Mary and Ma. For for y'all, for the men? No. Oh, for us. Yeah. Oh, somebody that's what they call it. Oh, Mary. yeah, call them Mary and Martha. I like that. Freaking frack. Freaking frack. I like I like all of those. I like Mary and Martha. <laughs> kind of almost biblical. Cheech and Chong. Oh, that's for the men. Cheech and Chong. Cheech and Chong. Cheech and Chong. That's right. Tom and Jerry. Tom and Jerry. Ooh, I like Tom and Jerry. Tom yeah. and Jerry. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I like it. Keep them coming. Y'all <laughs> pose. Inbox me. Let me know what you think we should the men should call they they bros. And more and more um more nicknames for the for for the women. I like it. This, yeah, I like Dorothy it. Mary and my Dorothy and Sophia. There we go. Mm -hmm. Love it. I feel like you should have four boobies though. It's just to, you don't want to leave yeah, nobody you out. Do the golden girl. No, nah, you'll leave nobody out. But everybody knows Dorothy and Sophia. Well, that's true. Like that's the that's the tag team. Okay, we out of here. We ain't talking about nothing. Bye, y'all. <laughs> Bye. Thank you so much. Y'all have a good week. <laughs>